I want to talk about the idea of emergent order very broadly first, and then we'll come back and apply it to some of the things that we've been talking about already. Sure. So it's getting nerdy. <laughs> um, I can nerd out on this forever. Um, well, okay. So what is it? So there's order, which what does that mean? It means structure. It means structure that has utility, perhaps. So, you know, something can be ordered so that it's pleasing to look at because it's symmetrical, but something can be ordered like a line so that people know who comes next. And that's a purpose to the structure. And, and so that's order. And then, and then there's emergent, which is, uh, things coming about spontaneously unplanned. And so when you take these two things together, they seem like, well, how do they live together as words even? Because you've got unplanned and spontaneous, and then you've got structured and purposeful. Huh? <laughs> Isn't this just an oxymoron? It's like, well, no, it's actually the most important idea in economics and social organization, you can grapple with. It is actually the nature of all of reality. And what do I mean by that? Well, we are here speaking to each other in English. There is no designer of the English language. No one designed it. It isn't planned. Um, the documentation of the English language, including Merriam-Webster's dictionary, is and after the fact recording of the emergent process of language creation that has been going on for, for the entire history of the English language. It's, but there is no planner. Even the French, they try to plan Fran Fr French. They have like ministries because really like if you look at it, all the commie nonsense all kind of ends up going back to France and like the salons of France. It's like Pol Pot like went to France and then went back home and kill the third of his population. So the, the French have got a lot of trouble. <laughs> they got a lot of baggage when it comes to trying to plan other people's lives, including their own language, but they can't even plan their language because, you know, you look at no one, even though the people, actually Googling is a perfect example. So um, Sergey Brin and Larry Page desperately did not want us to use Google as a verb. Be, like, just like the people of Kleenex brand did not want people to say, get me a Kleenex to mean a tissue. And that's because it sounds like, well, why wouldn't you want that? You're like universal. Well, when you become universal, you actually cease to be able to be a copyright. So if you're actually like a copyright holder of a, like, of a, like Google.com, you want people saying web search. You don't want them saying, let's Google that. It's actually like a cost. You could lose your copy. You could lose your trademark. If you become generic and yet despite the creators of the names google and kleenex we say google that we say hand me a kleenex even though it's just a generic tissue box from costco there are no planners of language so what's language well language is the entire structure of how we communicate and think in our minds so if that's not an order, I don't know what is. And yet there is no planner or designer of that order. And it is the mediating order of all of human social reality. That's emergent order. I can go on and on with examples, but I think language is the most powerful one because you can't escape its, its foundational basis. If the notion that in, if something's really important, there needs to be like a czar or a or an agency <laughs> or you know a regulator it's like well i think language is a pretty important thing you know and there's no czar of language there's no planner there's no regulator uh and everybody that tries to be the regulator of language are instantly obviously villains because it's you just look at what's happening in like the countries that don't have a first amendment and they're literally imprisoning people for saying women are adult human females. Like, so that's what happens. That's what the planners want to do. But emergence um, is freedom. It's freedom. So then you say, okay, I can stop there if you want, want to dive into that deeper. I can keep no, going. No, keep, keep going. Okay. 
So what are the limits of that? Well, like, like let's expand that out. So, okay, language is emergent, an example of an emergent order that's a foundational tool of civilization. Um, but there's, but it, it actually, it actually permeates everything because first of all, we don't even know how our minds operate. So if you don't believe in a soul and God, then you have to believe that our consciousness in some sense is emergent out of something, out of some process. Um, a different way to say emergent order is evolution. So what is evolution? Evolution is survival in a fitness environment through a process of random mutation, right? That's a rough explanation of it. Like, oh, you go to Galapagos Islands, you notice that there's birds with long beaks whose beak mirror the shape of the of the tulip that they feed. Why? Because those are the descendants of the birds that happen to randomly have the longer beaks and thus could get more calories and survive and have offspring. So the shape of the bird is a, pro is a product of an emergent process of trial and error. You go out into the ocean and you see a bunch of boats floating in the ocean. What you don't see is there's a bunch of boats that sunk to the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> so even when you have architecture and planning, because, because the boat didn't just evolve out of, the boat's not a, a being, the boat is a product of planning, human planning, an architect, a designer, but the boat's survival is the result of a broader, larger, emergent order, which is the ocean and its vicissitudes, <laughs> and will it survive? a heavy storm? Will it survive being raided by pirates? You know, does it have high enough walls to survive the pirating? Whatever. But like the point is, even when we see planning, because we are a planning creature, it's actually what makes us pretty distinct, is that we can plan and create. Um, our plans are still fundamentally validated, ultimately, in an order that is not planned. We have global anarchy. There is no one world government. So even at the level of the planet, planetary governance, and gosh, that's a, the, the, the trial and error part is so essential to understanding why this concept's important. Because if you go, come back to this evolution, and I, uh, Matt Ridley, who we've, we've had him on the show a while back, and he's a, fr a friend, and he's written about this extensively. He's got a great book called The Evolution of Everything that talks about this. but. If you st stop to think of your own self and you say, okay, I, I don't know what I'm capable of. And none of us actually know what we're capable of. Like we actually don't. And, and, we kn and, and I can prove that to anyone because anyone that's capable of speech can conjure a moment where they did something they didn't think they could do. They climbed a tree higher than they thought they, were, they, they had the, the guts to climb. Uh, they drew a picture that was better than they thought they could draw. They, across the board, you know, they, they overcame their, their self-doubts. They got better at a thing. They didn't think they could learn a language and they learned it. We all, we don't know what we're capable of. So if you start there, it's a form of, it, we don't know what we're capable of and we, and therefore we certainly don't know what other people are capable of. Because how can I know what you're capable of if I don't even know what I'm capable of? So how do I decide, how do I even discover? Because it's a discovery process, what I'm capable of. I have to try. <laughs> I have to play. I have to go out into the world and try things out and see if I like them, see if I'm good at them. I have to persist and see it like, oh, I try this. Almost nothing you try first, you're going to be good at. Mm -hmm. And so then you have to decide, do I keep trying? And so your career is ultimately an emergent order, even as you're trying to plan it, because you don't know if you'll be good at the next step. You get a promotion and you are not sure if you're going to be capable of managing other people. And at first, maybe you're not. And then you learn. Or maybe it turns out you're bad at it and you actually need to take a step back and change gears because you know what? You're better 
at the drafting table than trying to coordinate other people's priorities. You just, that's what you're, that's your deal. So our lives are fundamentally an emergent order. And I think the tension we have without getting into like the conspirators and the crooks and the power mongers that want to tell other people what to do and the busybodies that want to say no at every turn except for themselves. Mm -hmm. um, we have to contend with the fact that here's this microphone that is clearly the product of a mul multiple layers of planning and design and precision. The cameras were recording. They are not purely the product of an emergent order. They are, there is planning. We are surrounded by planning. And yet none of that planning would work if it wasn't embedded in the unplanned competitive evolutionary process of emergent order. None of it would work because you'd, the first versions of this didn't work. And if they, if it did work, the implications of that are crazy. If you could centrally plan society, you would need to already know everything right now. I would, in order for me to have any chance at planning your life, I need to already know its entire path and every interaction you're going to have with every other person all along the way. Because otherwise, how the hell am I going to do it? I can't possibly do it. Just like the first attempts to design this microphone definitely failed. <laughs> do you think they wanted it to fail? <laughs> I mean, there's a process, there's a creative process I believe I, I experience every time as a creative person. You have an idea and you think, this is awesome. And then you start to work on it and realize, this is hard. <laughs> And then you hit the inevitable point where you say, this is trash. It always happens. You always <laughs> go through a moment where your work is trash. You didn't want it to be trash. You didn't plan for it to be trash, but it's trash. And then you probably say, well, maybe I'm trash. <laughs> maybe I just suck. Maybe I just got over my skis. This is not good. If it was ever going to be good, you have to push past that and keep at it, keep iterating and get this plug to actually stay connected, even when it gets bumped and doesn't rattle. And then you realize, oh, this is actually pretty good. And if you get all the way to the end, through every bit of emergent feedback, you come back to maybe if you're lucky, oh, this is actually awesome. This is even better than I thought it was going to be. Or it's not, or it's different in a way it was unexpected. That's emergent order. This is the reality of the universe and you deny it and try to and try to change it at your peril and that's the the, the basically 100 million death count of the soviets and maoists of the 20, 20th century they were saying like no we can plan society we can tell you what you're going to be for the rest of your life no you can't it's it's literally impossible communism isn't good in theory it isn't good in theory that, that claim, oh, well, communism is good in theory, but not in practice. No, it's broken at the most fundamental unit of knowledge itself, <laughs> which is communism only works in heaven where there is like an omniscient being that knows the entire path of all reality. Otherwise, can't work. And guess what? I bet there's no government in heaven. So, you know. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, why would you need it? We're in heaven. So, yeah. Yeah.